Kendrick, we didn't get a chance to cover it last week because mm-hmm. we recorded on a Monday. Uh, Ken and Friends, the pop out show, it was legendary. Yeah. Uh, I had FOMO for the very first time in a very long time. I never look at crowded places of festivals and concerts and be like, oh my God, I need to be there. Mm -hmm. I had that. I had that. And also, not only did I have FOMO, but as somebody who grew up on the East Coast, um, I was jealous. Of their like collective culture, right? I was super jealous that we don't have that, um, that I don't see us having that camaraderie, community, mm-hmm. um, and just unity. Mm-hmm. It, it was on full display, and it was a, a amazing to watch. And I'm also pissed off because I can't even understand it mm-hmm. as a New Yorker. I don't understand all the different cliques and colors and right. shit that's on that stage and just how powerful it was. It takes the the people like the DJ heads. It takes the people from the West Coast Mustard. to really break that down to say, yo, this was monumental beyond what y'all saw on Amazon Prime. Like, if you're from here, you know exactly what that was. And my jealousy is also a sense of pride and just being happy of being a part and a fan of the culture. But as a New Yorker, it's like, damn, we will never have that. And I'm happy for them. I don't know about that. Like, I understand, like, what you're saying. Like, the it was literally... I could not imagine being from LA right now, like how proud I would feel. Mm. But I do agree that the East Coast, specifically like New York, like it might not be that way now, like the collective culture, collective culture feeling. But like, let's not act like New York doesn't have that though, like a we don't. culture. We like don't. I think they, not, I think New York has culture. I, I think he's talking like a sense of unity, like community, and, and community. yeah, community. And camaraderie, and not for nothing. Like I don't know. I feel like not right now, but it like could, it maybe if you see Brooklyn, day. if you see maybe. Brooklyn in the summertime, like <laughs> back in the day, like yes, there is. Is absolutely a strong New York culture. Like, let's not act like there's no. no there like, is a strong New York culture. Mm-hmm. Like, the culture is strong, but there's not somebody who could unify all of the different boroughs and all of the different towns and whatever set. Like, there's we don't have that. We don't have the one because New York decided to segregate, and the powers that be didn't really pass down anything mm-hmm. from a New York standpoint. Whereas LA has always stood together because they always felt like they had to compete. They always felt slept on or however they feel. I don't even want to talk for anybody on the West Coast, but you can just tell over the last 20, 30 years, especially in hip hop in particular, that they took a different route, a different approach. Um, and their leaders, their, 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 yeah, their leaders, I'll just say it. I think there's a little bit more structure when it comes to that in LA. Uh, that's probably like the biggest difference between New York and LA. Like New York got a bunch of gangs, a bunch of sets. But I don't, and I'm not going to speak for all, all people that bang or whatever, but see the camaraderie that we saw on that stage, that's, that's something Nipsey was trying to do for the longest throughout that. Wow, that's a good point. Right? And Nipsey even did it again um, for, for his unfortunate passing, right? We saw all these yeah. people unite these different sets. To the casual aisle watching that pop-up Kendrick show, you probably just saw colors, mm-hmm. right? You just saw probably just different black people, which is beautiful and it was dope. Bro, you had different sets up there who probably had tons of issues with each other for sure right and you're you're right in new york that's really difficult to do Mm-mm. aside from that that was hip-hop i know that term gets overused a lot but what i witnessed at that kendrick pop-up show i wish i was there as well you're right i do envy the people in that room and granted we on the east coast but that was hip-hop down to the culture in the room the unity um shit, the breath control from kendrick lamar right even even the fact that he had no backtrack while he was performing. We were able to hear every single word, even if he slipped up and messed up. So yeah, to, to, to your point, man, I, I was jealous too. I, I think like too. what gets me is like, I've been to like a lot of concerts and we've been to like sporting events and stuff like that. Like what you know is like the video never does it justice, like being there in person. Mm-hmm. So like watching the video, the Amazon live stream, which was the real MVP, by the way, like even yeah. watching that was amazing. But so I can't even imagine what it was like in person to be there. Like, I, I know honestly. I can't even fathom like what that felt like. No, literally. And when I was watching it, you know, he started with euphoria. He went to DNA. He went in the element. He went in the all right. He went in the swimming pools. He went in the money trees. I'm just mentioning this to make a point at the end of this. He went in the win with J-Rock, King's Dead, 616 in LA, Collard Greens, that part, King Kunta. It goes on and on and on. I think a lot, I've heard a lot of people a little bit confused with his song selections. But if you listen really close enough, a lot of those songs were lines that he probably directed at Drake over the years. Mm. Right? Like his whole set list to me just sounded like, yo, this wasn't nothing new, y'all. Right. So that was super impactful for me to watch. And just to kind of culminate the 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 moment, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, y'all, like, just in case y'all thought this is something new, it really ain't. Even if you don't understand what's going on, I'm going to make sure you do it in a different way. He, he didn't play Meet the Grams, right? He didn't play Meet the Grams. I think he, he knew the energy would be uh, too solemn. Yeah. <laughs> it would have gotten real dark in there. Yeah, real, real, real dark in there, real fast. But his point lie. is like, yo, this is not just about not like us, but it's about like what I've been trying to say for the last decade about yeah, this man. Exactly. And it, it just speaks to the artist that he is. Um, and the Gemini that he is. Sorry. When, <laughs> for sure, for sure. What do you mean by that, love? Just like... Yeah. Just like having this very strong hatred for years and being very calculated about it and like very motivated. Wow. I do know someone that uh, just a Gemini that like moves with, like that. With vengeance. Yeah. And they'll mm -hmm. keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. Why you smile? Don't out niggas. <laughs> Don't out niggas. <laughs> this is the audio. Nobody can hear it. Like, they, but they can see us. Smile. He nobody, was holding they can something see us. so no, bad. They can see us. I didn't say anything. <laughs> they can but see what us. I will say <laughs> about, um, you know, just that whole, that, that whole performance. Yep. Like you said, there was so many things to break down. And I feel like at this point, um, it happened a week ago at the time mm -hmm. of this episode recording. So maybe we don't have to go like super deep dive right. into it. Uh, but speaking about some of the highlights and again going back to the community thing what really stuck out to me is at a time when you know hip-hop because hip-hop still relatively new in the grand scheme of fucking life oh, like right? life yes you know what i'm saying yeah so the, the biggest 70s. thing for me when i thought about it compared to new york and again it's not an east coast versus west coast thing it's just a comparison thing it's like all right in my region because i've been comparing the bar has been atlanta in the south let me not even just say Atlanta, but the bar has been the South for the last, what, decade, 15 years. Mm -hmm. The South has kind of been pushing the needle. You've seen a lot of uh, camaraderie, community, collaborations, all of that very present in the South. So that's where I've kind of been looking. The West, they've been, they just stay consistent. They just do them. They do and then they, they do, get man. moments like this and you're like, holy shit, they've been building this for so long because the people at the front of their genre always pass the baton. You get what I'm saying? Going all the way back to NWA, uh, NWA days, uh, Dr. Dre, Dre yeah. Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, all of the guys from the Bay, E-40s, like they always kind of pass the baton to the next guy. New York stopped passing the baton because we started competing with each other. And so that's why I think we can't do something like this today. Not because we don't have the talent, not because um, you know we don't have the artists, but there was a certain point in West Coast, East Coast, whatever, in the progression where the, the leaders, the Jay-Zs, the Diddy's, the 50 Cent's, it came more about themselves than it was about passing on game for whatever the reason may be, right? Business. When I think of New York, I think of business. Yeah. Jay-Z, 50 Cent. And jungle. Formerly Diddy when he was, you know, in that race. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, it was just nice to see that in the west coast yeah and you you mentioned this earlier the west coast doesn't sway from what they do they don't and i love it that was the most impressive part to me because many other states many other territories have tried to mimic other regions in an effort in trying to gain a new fan base or just stay relevant or stay current right so to see them just put their flag in the soil and year after year just come out with the sound that they want to put out and produce that was eye-opening even down to the smaller acts on headset. Like, that shit fucked me up. I can't lie. 